Also in the news this month marks the anniversary of the October crisis, a dark moment in Quebec history. It was a time of protests, bombings and kidnappings, which led to the enactment of the War Measures Act. It is exactly 40 years ago today that the controversial act was invoked, paving the way for hundreds of Quebecers to be rounded up and thrown in jail. Caroline Van Vlardigan joins us. Caroline, a monument was unveiled today to remember that time. Yes, uh, it was uh, sovereign to say not a dark time, not only for them, but also for anyone who believes in civil rights. So today they gathered outside the St. Jean Baptiste Society to remember and to remind Quebecers how those human rights were suspended. It bears the names of hundreds of people, Quebec militants, intellectuals, and journalists whose rights were suspended 40 years ago. Would you like to get woken up at 4 o'clock in the morning? with machine guns, not knowing what's happening. Daniel Waterloo remembers how his bookstore was raided and he was thrown in jail for three months. From the uh, beginning of uh, November to the end of January. And I was accused at, the, uh, at that time of seditious libel, which was hung on my head like that for two years. After two years when I passed in the, in the uh, court, they, no, no accusation. Waterloo and several others who were rounded up by the RCMP and Sûreté de Québec told their stories as a reminder of what they suffered under the War Measures Act, an act that they charged was intended to squelch sovereignist hopes and in many cases succeeded. This event had a terrific uh, negative impact on the psychology of many of our compatriots. Former Premier Bernard Landry says his own aunt was terrorized by the sight of helicopters and police with machine guns in their village. My aunt Gertrude was terrorized, really, it's the word. She was afraid of war, and that was War Measure Act. His dream come true. The monument was the dream of René Bataille, a journalist imprisoned for 13 days who proposed the monument four years ago but never lived to see it erected. He died this past May. His two sons were there to pay homage to their father and his dream. He was angry all his life about that and uh, never uh, dropped the battle. A battle that sovereigntists say they'll continue to fight democratically until their own dream of a nation is realized. Caroline Van Vlardigan, CTV News.